In this video, I will present one of the built-in rule sets that are in City Engine, namely the OpenStreetMap Loader rule. So, it's one of those that are there, and it's really a nice little rule because it's relatively easy to modify, to um, treat to your own use. So, um, let's dive into City Engine and um, look. So. Earlier we have uh, created these uh, buildings. We had um, by creating a circle in our road network, and that creates this block here. That if I click here, I can get it right. This block here, I can then turn this off, so they go away. And then back, and when we originally started our video series on City Engine, I loaded also. Not only the base map, but also the footprints from City Engine. So these, so these are all the footprints that um, from the Open Street Map. And um, I've also talked about that we can apply a rule by dragging a rule onto a object. So if I go to my Isvilip and close all of this and go down into Rules. And under buildings, I have this rule called buildings from OpenStreetMap. You can use it on anything else. You don't have to be OpenStreetMap buildings, but you can use it on basically any shape. So I'll just uh, drag this over here. And um, I can see that I'll probably start in being in front of the dialog box. So, so um, and um, what we have here is the basic properties that is controlling the shape here. So at the moment, or this model, I should say, the shapes are the black ones. So here we have levels. We can see that if I want this to be a four storage high building, I can just change that four. I can also change the height of my building by changing these. Um, I could also say that if I wanted four floors, but they had to be five meters high each floor again my building would um would change so that's lots of different odds and ends you can do um let's bring this back to 3.7 um so uh oh 3.7 hmm so um At the moment, there's a block. I can change the roof of it, um, whatever I want. Um, but in this case, what I really want to do is that I want to change um, my way that it appears. So first of all, I think I want to bring it down to. Uh, no, let's, let's let's leave it. Like it. Let's look at. Um, at the moment, it's a solid color. I can change it to a realistic. So um, here we have a, um, a res I don't know what is probably a residential image. I can change if I just don't want a random one, but say this is going to be an office, and it's probably not going to be. Let's put it on a mansard roof. Um, so that looks a bit better. Um, these images, as you can see, really consist of two things. In this case, it's not very elegantly done. It has a first floor, and then it has uh, these two floors, and then it has a fourth, what is that, fourth floor, and then it has its roof. So it's built in these elements. And uh, these are all images that are used for texturing the, the building. So um, I can change these in different ways. And what I want to do is that I'm not really, so I'm not, there's an office and uh, I could probably see a industry or whatever we want. So there's different types that I can choose from. Um, but I'm not really happy with these. Um, clearly there's something with the number of floors that you need to address. Um, I want to have my own, I want to make a image of the campus. So the campus, I know, let's say that, it'd be really boring, it's going to be a one, 
floor high. It has flat roofs and they are probably 3.7 meters high. And then I want to be able to have a type here that is called university. So where does this, where does this come from? Well, we know that we are using this open street map rule. And if I look here, hover over here, it says that buildings from footprints and imported by. So this is this rule here that it's using. So this part of the dialog box comes from this next part of the dialog box probably comes from another rule. So um, this tells me that if I look into my rule here and if I, these are written in this CGA, Computer Generated Architecture, which is, shouldn't call it a programming language, um, the grammar they use to generate architecture. It's a really interesting um, concept from a computer scientist's point of view, but it's also nice and relatively easy to learn. So if I open this, so double click, first time you do it, it might, it might say something about read only and change it, and that's fine. So um, what we have in here is it says there's a group called building settings, which is this one over here. And then there is something that is called an attribute called usage, which is this one. And just over that, it has what is called a numerator. That is just a list of things. So if I go in here after random and create a new list, limit like that, up oh, with a comma, and uh, say this. So in the file menu, I now have a type called rook here. It won't know what to do with it um, because it doesn't know what rook looks like but it has now the type hook. So how can I teach it what hook looks like? Well, I do that by giving it some facade images. You can of course go down on the street, use your camera, um, take some images, or if you are at home, you can go over and start um, Google Maps and take the little man and drop him somewhere. So, oh, look, there's the campus. And um, that is that we now need to have some images. So there's a structure in this. They have this, what is called a tile. Okay, so we have a height of the ground floor, which in this case probably isn't that high because it's only 3.7 meters. Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, but then it has a tile width. That's the width of each tile. And um, a tile is, so Rook's a really nice example. This is one tile, this is one tile, this is one tile, this is one tile. So this is two tiles. So you take an image, but you just think of it as what are the building blocks? Because if you want to make something that it looks more realistic, you can take a lot of different images and then use them to generate your buildings. That's the principle of this city engine. So if I, um, just basically take a screenshot here of uh, something that's big enough. So in this case, I want two tiles and I'll save it uh, to, I have a folder called uh, facades and call it hook. So I now got a image called that. And um, I now need to import this image into um, to my collection of images. So in City Engine, what we want to do is that we want to again go down into our SVLib and go down in Assets and Facades. And there's something called Ground Floor, so that's where we want to go. And here we have all these images that you can see there are some that are called education. And if you choose education over here, 
it will take one of the education. If you choose agriculture, it will take an agricultural image. Um, there is a um, a tool for loading images in. As you also can, you know that this image is not quite straight. That's all typically you know it has some screwness in it that you need to correct. So there's a tool for doing that. It's a bit annoying um, because it's under shapes. And um, it is this, um, then you have to find is this uh, image tool. And um, it's always difficult to find because it's not there. If you see it is that crop image because I haven't got any images selected. So basically you have to start by selecting an image. Then you can go on the shape, say crop image. Then it will default to that one I just chose. I just want to give it another image. Um, so, where to find an image? Well, again, here, this really annoying thing that we can only see inside our workspace. Um, so, I can't go outside my uh, workspace to get my images. So I need to somehow get my image into my workspace. So I just do that by canceling out all of this. And um, then finding my image folder. So here I've got my images. And I'll just um, basically drag this image into my folder somewhere, not there, uh, under images. There. And that's my image, and I'll just drag it in there, copy it. So here's my rock image. I can right click on it, choose crop image. So that was relatively easy. Um, then I can say, okay, I want to have two tiles. So I'll just make sure I got the roof up to this under the roof. And you can see the result of my correcting the screwness over. So. Something like that. Um, so now I've got an image and I want to um, save it. So now I'll save it down into this folder we looked at before. So in my Israelib, my assets, my facades, my international, my ground floor. Yeah, there's a lot of images. They are JPEGs. So I'll just change from the drop down list here. I'll just change them to JPEGs. Um, there. Because now we can see that they have a specific naming structure. So I just choose one of them. So it's called G F. So ground floor. That there's only one. If there's a more than one storage high ground floor, there will be a two there. So this is ground floor and how many storage it, the ground floor is. So you could have one that are two floors high. In this case, there is one floor. And in my case. This T says how many tiles. So in this case, it's two tiles. And this is the name of my model. So this is Rook. And 000. If I have another one, I could call it 001, 002, 003. So that way I can have lots of images that the software can use to make better models. This is just a simple version. So save that. And I have saved and finished. So if I now go and generate my model, hey presto, it has now got the campus as its facade. So it's um, the use of this is uh, relatively simple. And um, of course, uh, this is just one building. Um, 
Of course, if we wanted to uh, do something to all our images, so all of our area, basically we need to make all of this look a bit more realistic. Um, go to our scenes, find our footprints, select all of them. So just click on it and choose select objects. Then they're all selected. Go to our Svlib find our rules of building from and drag over on one of them and you can see it will be applied to all of them and um, we can then say we want them to be in realistic and we want them to be uh yeah they can be residential that's fine and um Now we have this nice model. Uh, we are somewhere in the middle of it. Have the campus building and surrounded by different other buildings. So we can mix this one, which is controlled specifically to be our hook image of buildings that are. So this one is set to be. So I think we can set it to be a. Uh, this one is going to be a public, so we can change the elements. We can change the floor of it. So this one is seven. So we can go in and change all of these things. That's the basics of um, creating um, models like this. So um, if we um, So um, to conclude this, um, the basic is that we have our rule sets and most of them, once you've just basic understanding of it, are relatively easy to modify. So you can basically just take this case. I use this open street map. I modified its attribute list to this enumerator. So I found where it has usage. And um, I um, added a section for uses of hook. So, um, and then I could have that as a drop down type. So, in my public here, I now could have my hook thing. And what this really does is that it references to a location again in my SVLib under assets and Facades international ground floor that are named. So if I just save an image of that naming scheme, I can have a visualization that fits the type of building I'm looking for. So I uh, hope um, the video is not too long. I hope you found it useful and um, hope to see you in another video. So bye.